What's up Plant Junkies? Jody here for another plant video from PlantJunkieCreations.com. Today I'm going to be going over the basic plant care of this beautiful Hoya Sigillatus and also walk you through the propagation. I'm not actually taking a cutting today, but I'm just going to show you how I went about it. The light requirement for this plant can tolerate medium to direct sunlight, but thrives best in that bright and direct sunlight. I currently have this Hoya in a hanging basket up high in a southwest window with a window film. So it is receiving a lot of sun exposure throughout the day. When it isn't sunny outside, I do provide an LED grow light because I seek the sun-stressed leaves. So the more light you provide this plant, you will see pinks and purple futures. The water requirement for this plant really all just depends on what type of pot you're using and what size of pot you're using. In this situation, I have, I think it's a four to five inch plastic pot with some slits to help with the aeration as well as the draining when I'm watering. I typically will water this plant on a 10 to 14 day cycle, which is kind of pushing it out. I would recommend to you guys to water it on a 10 to 12 day cycle. So I'm going to put that up there, 10 to 12 day cycle for a four to five inch pot with a well draining mix. I tend to push this one out because I just want to see how, how it does when it's in that drought environment. And what you'll notice if you don't water it enough is you'll notice very soft leaves. These are firm because I just watered this plant and you'll notice yellow leaves starting to turn yellow. It's a little bit of yellow. It's a lighter in color and will eventually fall off. For terracotta pots, um, this one I have in a two inch pot and I'm going to show you guys just how I water this one. But I'd water this on like a five to seven day cycle because the thing about terracotta is it it is porous, so it sucks some of that moisture, which is great for Hoyas, so it just isn't drenched for too long. But if you can see with the sphagnum moss, it's a great indicator to tell you when it's thirsty because that sphagnum moss will dry out. You'll also see the terracotta pot being light versus like some moisture. You can see the moist pot. I just watered this one for an example. But this one definitely needs to be watered and I'm going to show you how I do that. So I just go over the top of it. Let it drain through and then let it drain. Absolutely do not want like water sitting in the saucer and just leave it. You definitely want to dump out that water or you'll develop root rot. The soil requirement for this plant definitely likes a well-draining epiphytic mix. So here I've developed a well-draining mix that I use for my Hoya as well as for the propagations. I also have a link up here of a video I developed for you guys on how to make your own chunky mix for Hoyas as well as other plants. So you might find that helpful, so go, go check that out. But this is what it looks like. It consists of a lot of perlite, uh, a little bit of cocoa core, just a tiny bit, um, coconut husk, as well as sphagnum peat moss, 
um, tree fern, pine bark, and charcoal. A little bit of worm casting for some nutrients. The fertilizer requirement for this plant, you typically want to fertilize two times a month during the growing season. So when you see new leaves or peduncles forming, that's the perfect time to fertilize. In general, Hoyas don't need a whole lot of fertilizer. Whichever fertilizer you use, I would cut that dose in half or just use a quarter of it. And what I like to use, I rotate between these two. This is Orchid Bloom, but they also sell this at Lowe's in a spray form. And this is also another very good product I use a lot. It's Gringo Rasta from Rise Up from Fox Farm, I believe. The propagation of this plant was very simple for me. I chose to use those terracotta pots with a well-draining chunky mix and putting it in a greenhouse. Considering how easy it was, I'm sure you could just take a cutting and put it in sphagnum moss. It probably would do really well in perlite, um, leca, and water. And when you're taking a cutting from this plant, I'm not going to take one today because I'm enjoying the length of this and I already have a bunch of propagations, but I would take it right here, right? Um, let's see if there's another example. Like this one right here is a great one. Um, you see the aerial roots? So if you provide a, a chunky mix and then add a little sphagnum moss to that, that root is definitely going to start growing. You could either place it on the surface or you can place it in the center. As soon as I take a cutting, I'll put it in that well draining mix in a terracotta pot and I'll put it in a greenhouse under some grow lights, which provide that heat. It has humidity. What I do to help encourage root growth is I try to add a little bit more humidity. So I line this with sphagnum moss at the, at the base of this tray here. If you don't have a greenhouse, um, you can put it in a Ziploc bag. That's, a, that's you know, your cheaper route. You don't always have to buy things. Just work with what you have. So it was that easy. I think I started seeing roots develop after a week. When you're, when you're propagating, you know, some people ask, do you need to let it callus over? If you're going to place it in like water right away or perlite, yeah, let it callus over. But if you're using the chunky mix, just just let it uh, put, create your little home for it in the terracotta with the chunky mix. And then after about an hour or you remember that evening, then water it. If you enjoyed the content of this video, hit that like button. Also be sure to subscribe to my channel if you enjoy plant videos.